What's going on? Seamus O'Hara here from Art and Flight, and today we're going to talk about speed ramping. Speed ramping. Speed ramping. Speed ramping. Speed ramping. All right, so let's take a look at the effect we're going to create today, and we'll get started. To start off by creating a new project in Premiere Pro, we'll also create a folder to work with. In this case, I'm just going to do it on my desktop, but usually you'd want to do this on a separate drive. So because I already have a folder named SpeedRAM Tutorial, we'll just call this one 2. Inside that, we'll create a Project Files folder, Premiere Pro folder, and an After Effects folder. We'll also create a raw footage folder. And then we'll put the Premiere Pro and the After Effects into the Project Files folder. And we'll leave the raw footage folder as it is for now. Open up the Project Files and we'll call it Speed Ramp Tut. Okay, next step is to import your clips. So I've got two clips I'm going to import for this demonstration. The example I showed was a bit longer, but I'm going to leave one of the clips out. We don't need the driving off scene. All right, so I've dragged the footage into the project panel. And usually what you'd want to do in this case, if you're working with slow motion footage, is interpret your footage. I've already done this, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So select the footage, go to modify, interpret footage. Now this is if your footage is at 59 or 60 FPS, you want to bring it down to the frame rate that you're working with. In this case, we're going to be working with 29.97 frames per second. So you'd assume that frame rate, hit OK, and now it'll be nice and slow, nice and smooth like we want it. All right, so I'll select the clips that I want to use, highlight them both, right click and select new sequence from clip. All right, so We've got this very long because it's actually 120, so very long shot of our, our model walking to the car, getting in the car, and then the other end getting in the car from the other angle. So we want to put this all together. What we'll do is we'll select all our footage, right click, replace with After Effects composition. All right, so we'll put this in the same place. Project Files, this time we'll select the After Effects folder. And we'll call it speed. So now we're in After Effects. You see both the clips here. We don't need them to be separated. We're actually going to speed ramp both the clips at the same time. So we'll select both the clips, right click, select pre compose, and then make sure that move all attributes into the new composition is selected and hit OK. So now we've got one composition to work with, and we can speed ramp through this. And you'll see that we'll just speed through the. Uh, through this bit and um, actually you know what we're gonna chop that a bit so I'm gonna go back in here I want to end this clip actually about here so we'll just clip it down there bring this one in shorten the composition and right click trim comp to work area we'll go back to this one Do the same thing all right now we have the clip cut where we want it. And you obviously wouldn't want to show him getting in the car twice. So that's what the speed ramp will actually take care of. It'll fly through that fast enough that you won't even see the difference. So that's that's a useful way to use speed ramps for transitions. The next thing we're gonna do is also speed through this clip because it's so long. We only want to show bits of it. So in the example before we showed this bit here, sped up over to here, slowed down for this bit here sped up, open the door, sped up getting in, and then around and to the end. So, right click on the composition, hit time, enable time remapping. You're gonna see a keyframe at the beginning and a keyframe at the end. So now what we wanna do is go through and find the bits that we wanna slow down. So let's assume we've sped up everything. We're gonna pick the bits that we wanna slow down. 
So we wanna slow down from about here. Then we're just gonna scrub forward a little bit. We don't wanna show too much. I'd say that's about good. Create another keyframe there. Now, we're gonna fly through, find the next bit we wanna slow down. So somewhere around here looks good. Slow it down with a keyframe. I like to play it, that way I can get a feel for how long it's gonna be. And create another keyframe. Then, to the next part where he opens the door. There. So we'll put a keyframe there. Play through just a little bit. I'd say that's good. And then do one last one here, where he's getting into the car. And I'd say that's good. And there's actually one more, sorry, that wasn't awesome. Speed through this, and we'll slow it down right here. All right, perfect. So create those keyframes. Okay, so once your keyframes are set, let's easy ease them. So we ease in on this one, we want it to ease into the slow motion, and then we'll ease out on the other end and continue to do that for the rest of them. All right, once your keyframes are easy eased, it's time to drag them together to shorten the time. Okay, so now all the keyframes are together, we've got a shorter sequence, and we'll trim the comp to the same width. All right, that's good. Okay, so now it's time to go in and sort of fine tune the easy ease on these keyframes. So select a time remap, hit the graph editor, and you'll see the graph come up. This represents the speed at which the clip is gonna play through. We want this clip to start off fast and slow down into the slow motion. So usually you'd actually pair this up with another clip before it, speeding up out of that clip, and then you'd have a nice transition between these two clips. We're just working on part of an edit right now, so that's why it's starting like this. All right, so select the keyframe and drag that handle into the back so that it creates a steeper transition there. Select the next handle and bring it this way. Now you wanna to try to line everything up. If you see that these aren't lined up, you wanna line them up. Be really careful when working with the graph editor because it's easy to move these little yellow dots out of the position that you want them in and that'll really screw up the whole thing. So just be very cautious when you're working with this not to move the keyframes out of position. So try to just select the handle, drag it all the way in. It helps to hold shift when you're doing this. You'll see I actually just moved it up, but if you look and you hover over, it's at 0.79 seconds and it was lower than that before. So you wanna to try to keep these around one second per second because that's just regular speed. So if you see that one of them is out of place, just move it back. So what we're doing here is we're creating a smoother transition. So if you look at the, the curve of the line here, you'll see that it's slowly gonna speed up and then nice and slow back down into the slow motion. So it gives a really nice effect that way instead of a harsher sort of start and stop to the slow motion. So continue to do that all the way through. And if you see another bit of the line graph getting screwed up when you're adjusting one of the handles, just control Z, go back and make sure you're only selecting that one handle because sometimes more than one will get selected like, just, like it just did and you'll get these weird effects happening. So deselect everything and then just select that handle again. All right, there we go, much better. That should be good. Let's preview that and see what we've got. Okay, so that's the effect. From here, all you gotta do is render it out at this point. So add to Adobe Media Render Queue, render it out, go into Premiere, import the new clip that you've exported into Premiere. I'll show you that in just a sec. So you can actually skip this step. You don't need to render it out from After Effects. You could go into Premiere Pro and then let Premiere Pro handle the render in your previews or however you wanna do it. I find that with especially a complex After Effects composition, it really helps to render it out first. And then you're working with a video file in Premiere Pro and it seems to be a lot quicker that way. All right, so we've sent it to Adobe Media Encoder. Let's select the location that it's gonna save it to. So we'll go back to our folder and we'll put this in the raw footage folder. You can put it wherever you want. I'm not gonna bother changing the name. Now for the settings, this is important because if you export with a lower bit rate than your footage is, you'll be losing quality. You'll be compressing the video footage uh, in between and you don't wanna lose any quality in these steps. So what I'll usually do here, and again, this is, everyone's gonna do this a little differently. 
but uh, I like to use the DNX uh, HD444 um, QuickTime codec. Uh, if you're working on a Mac, I would recommend Apple ProRes. Uh, if I was working on a Mac, I'd use that too, but since I'm not, I have to go with the DNX HD. Um, I still find it's a great codec, uh, it retains all the quality there. Uh, you have big files to work with, but it is worth it. All right, so I'll go in, I'll leave most of that. Make sure my render at maximum depth is clicked as well as use maximum render quality. Everything looks good from here. So I'll output that and we'll be right back. All right, once your footage is encoded, let's go back into Premiere. We can actually close After Effects at this point. Save it. Go back and then I'll import create a new sequence from that and then we've got the footage that we can now color grade and composite with music whatever we want to do all right so that covers speed ramping for today there are a million ways to do it so try them out and leave them in the comments below i'd love to see them if this tutorial has been helpful for you please subscribe to the channel hit that bell notification so you get notified next time i put out a tutorial and i'll see you in the next one